It's another side that like wants to take more. It wants to go that one more round. Because like going that one more round when you don't think you can, that's what makes all the difference in your life. You know what I mean? Welcome to another episode of One More Round of the Rocky Series Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan. And together again, after a bit of a break, the three of us are back together again. And as it should be for the start of Season 3 of One More Round, Rocky 3, we have Katie and Kyle. Katie, welcome back from your vacation. How did it go? (laughs) Good. Just a quick little, just happened to be gone on the Sunday. But yeah, it was good. Thank you. I am uh, very excited that Kyle is returning to Earth now. From Mars. Temporarily, temporarily, I'm upstairs right now. The lighting in the basement room, which I'm usually in, causes my camera to go red. It did spontaneously stop mm-hmm. doing that the other day, but I, I don't have a lot of faith in it that that will be a trend going forward. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, it was weird because the yeah, last episode we had, of course, guest host Doug from the Rocky Minute Podcast, the number one podcast on our network. Uh, <laughs> Doug, uh, we love you. And you did an amazing job. He listens to every show. Uh, he truly is a great guy. Doug Aww. is like the nicest guy. He's just a sweetheart of a guy. He really is. I hate that one of us can't be here, but he's my fr- he's the first guy I message if one of us can't be here. I do want to commend you guys. It was a really good episode. I very much enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. Uh, and during that episode, though, you probably heard it if you're obviously listening to the show. Kyle or Doug mentioned, "Hey, look, Kyle's you know come down to earth." What happened was his red light or whatever it went normal so Mm -hmm. kyle became normal in fact jared from the uh guest host that he's come on the show with this one as well jared talkstein he uh created a picture of kyle (laughs) yes has kyle seen it i don't think so i don't know (laughs) okay well for the youtube version again if you want to check this out on youtube check out our youtube channel one more round the rocky series podcast you can google it uh i'll show the picture now that Jared created. It was really funny. Basically, what was it again? It was Kyle with like like the Martian, like the cover of the book, The Martian or whatever. It yeah. was Kyle coming back to Earth or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's great. I love when our listeners do that kind of stuff. They know the lore enough to know that Kyle is no longer red. <laughs> but that's why, again, that's why the logo of our logo, if you look at our podcast logo, you know, of course, Katie's pink. I'm blue for whatever is my favorite color with a little blonde hair or gray hair. And uh, there's Kyle with glasses and the red face. That's because of the that's because of his red camera. That's why it's red. Anyways. Well, how are okay. you, Ryan? Oh, I'm doing well, I'm doing fine. Settling into my new job and just learning a lot to learn. This the learning curve is high, but the stress is low, meaning I have a lot to learn, oh. but there's no I'm not put to the gun or the pressure or you better figure this out or you're you know, it's oh, just, that's really nice like what a comforting feeling also is this your new um podcasting room yes this is the office this is the office uh behind me to my left is uh the futon that we'll be putting up in here for guests when they come over so they can sleep here it's a big enough room they can sleep here but yeah that's my desk and all well set up and yeah i'm good to go very nice and uh, kyle has a blackboard behind him is that what that is yeah it's in my uh, kitchen we have a chalkboard wall that the kids draw on and that we oh, draw cool. on. Sorry, chalkboard. I should say blackboard. Well, that's that's okay. I kind of I kind of washed it before the podcast, but it still has those streaks. But no, I like it. I, I, like I do it. too. It reminds me of being a kid. In yeah. School. <laughs> I remember having to do chalkboard duty. You know, pounding, slapping the, the yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, listeners, we are that old. We didn't have whiteboards <laughs> when we were in grade school. Yeah, or no, like, uh, yeah. Dry eraser boards? No, yeah. no, 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 no. There was in my high school. There was a few rooms that had dry eraser boards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kyle's drawing. a little younger. Yeah. He's a little younger than us, so he might have. Well, Katie been... and I are pretty close in age. Well, we're probably about like older brother, middle sister, younger brother, kind right. of probably. Matter of years, it can change things. And it depends on the school, mm-hmm. the budget, the district. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, some schools might have been, some schools might have had dry racer boards when I was in school, but there right. was, there was with the rich private schools for all I know. I think I did have some in high school as well, Kyle, but 
What what so, what year yeah. did you graduate high school? Oh, ninety nine. I was two thousand two. So was, okay. oh okay. Yeah. So you're my you're my older sister's age. Yeah. Okay, ninety nine, and I was ninety three. Okay, mm-hmm. so we're all within that kind of. Yeah, I'm the old one. We know that. Okay. Well, we you're like the walk- screwed up middle child, Katie. I know, which is weird because I'm actually the the youngest child. So I'm. That's right. Yeah. You know, and I'm a Leo, so apparently we like attention. You know. Really. Yeah, young Leo's and the youngest child. They're sort of notorious sure. for that. Sure. All right. Well, yeah. Well, you came to the wrong podcast. You're respecting any attention. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have an audience to have attention. No. Um, well, thank you so much for everyone who's joining us live or watches us on the Patreon page and who supports me on Patreon. I do appreciate it because it, as I've always said, it helps pay for the uh, last of the Action Heroes podcast feed. And I know I don't plug it very often. I should plug it more. You, I mean, you're listening to this via that network. You see all the shows that come on. I want to thank everyone that joins uh, or joins and listens to the variety of shows on there. The Rocky Minutes there, of course. My co-host from the Rambo podcast, Dom Mattello. Dom, he's amazing. He's great. His Movie Thought podcast is, is fun. Uh, he's a great guy. And I'm really grateful for you guys. I'm just uh, feeling nostalgia because here we are moving on to part three, Rocky three, season three of One More Round. This is where we get a little bit uh, cartoonish, folks. The 80s is kicked in full throttle. Oh, Katie, speaking of which, you're excited because you like the 80s. But quickly, why don't you just plug your amazing podcast, please? I always oh, you're to... so kind. Yeah, oh, speaking please. of it, I do love the 80s Rockies <laughs> and things 80s and 90s. So I have a podcast if anybody wants to check out nostalgic stuff, movies and TV shows and all that. It's called Retro Made, Your Pop Culture Rewind. And YouTube channel and wherever you listen to podcasts, we cover movies and throw in, I sprinkle in pop culture of the time. If you like that kind of thing, check it out. You do a great job. And I'm, I, I know I said this on the last podcast, but I don't think you're there. I'm just so proud of you. You're like, Aww. you know, to see you spread your wings and do your own thing. And would you be doing a retro made podcast had I never invited no, you? To no, no. That's what I no, thought. No, probably. And so thanks a lot. But also, well, no, I do I'll want to give you uh, like so much credit because you have a lot of shows and you're you're very professional and well-spoken and not everyone is myself included i am not not true Um, you're the smart one on the show also there is so much work behind the scenes i didn't have a full appreciation for and still until i started doing it so everyone ryan spends a lot of time being meticulous about getting a quality show out. So thank you, Ryan. Oh, stop it. Stop it, you. All right, you're making me blush. Okay, well, speaking of which, we're going to go into Rocky 3. We don't have any emails, so if you haven't sent us an email in a while, and we'd love to hear from you. I do want to say thank you to those who do comment on our YouTube channel. Uh, those are always read, and I always respond. And our Facebook uh, group as well. I always read those, and I always respond. But I kind of keep it there to those social interactions on YouTube and on Facebook or Twitter. And I want to thank, say thanks to those people who do listen and comment there, but the emails just have a different flavor. So if you want to send us an email, we'll mm-hmm. read those on the air, of course, and voicemails as well. If you can send us a voice file, we'll play it on the air. Uh, that will work as well. We haven't had that happen yet. Who's going to be the first one? I sent one. <laughs> That's not a podcaster or a podcast host. So yeah, yeah, how yeah. it works, folks, if you have a smartphone, you just download a, a video app or sorry, a voice app. It's called like video record or voice record. It's very easy. You just literally talk into your phone like a voicemail, and then you hit share an email, and off it goes. It's like a very small file in your email. It'll go to anyone. It's very easy to do, so try it out, and our email is in every show note. Okay, so we're talking about Rocky Three. Okay, as we all know, Rocky Three came out in 82. It was written, directed, and starred Sylvester Stallone, who also did the other previous Rocky uh, movies. His second film of Rocky Two was the first one he directed, and then he directed this one again. Continues the story. We have the addition, of course, of Mr. T playing Clubber Lang. And did you guys know how Mr. T was found? Contest for, um, what are the door guys? Bouncers? Yeah, yeah it's crazy. I tried to find a YouTube clip on it so I could show it on our channel here. Couldn't find one. So, yeah, so real-life boxers Joe Fraser and Ernie Shavers were considered for the part. Which would have been kind of weird had Joe Fraser been given the part, considered he did an actual cameo in the first Rocky film. He's too yes. nice. Yeah, he's way too nice. There's no way he could be an asshole like that. Even Ernie Shavers is a pretty nice guy, too. I'm glad they didn't cast either of those guys. I love how Stallone just got to get another black guy. (laughs) I sort of assumed there are more black boxers than white boxers, maybe. In the heavyweight division at that time, for sure. There were white boxers who were competitive, for sure. But if you look at like all the heavyweight champions in the 70s and the 80s, 
it was, I think, exclusively black guys. Even into the 90s, like it wasn't until like the 2000s and later. Like right mm-hmm. now, the heavyweight champions are white, but mm-hmm. black guys were definitely in the heavyweight division kind of more prominent. Yeah. There's there's this thing like the um the Great White Hope. Yeah. There's a movie, it's really obscure. It's called The Great White Hype. Is that a part of our boxing movie watch? Uh, uh, well, I shared the link with you guys so you have access yes, to it you, a while yes, ago. You, but I, I didn't I'd have to check. It. I guess it's not that obscure. I thought it was. I, you didn't I, memorize it? Oh, my God. No. <laughs> it's not that obscure. But, yes, I know what you're talking about. It's got Samuel Jackson, Jeff mm-hmm. Goldblum in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're definitely going to have to add that to our resume. That's going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah. Okay. Mr. T was chosen after winning the competition called America's America's Best Bouncer. <laughs> Rocky Three was the first film in the franchise to be distributed by NGM slash UA Entertainment Company following a merger with United Artists. So, I guess MGM merged with ua at that point so rocky the first two rockies were not mgm yeah uh by the merger of mgm slash ua so i guess mgm oh. merged with united artists okay now probably retroactively we see th- yeah the, yeah because but when at that time yeah the merger yeah of course when it was released in 82 may of 82 mixed reviews from film critics of course some praised the action scenes in the music while others felt the screenplay was lacking and considered the film unnecessary this is kind of where Kyle falls into it like if he takes on his critic hat, you know, he's mentioned that the sequels themselves are unnecessary, but I would argue films in general are unnecessary. Yeah. You're like, well, sure. Like, we don't need a film to exist to live. I know what they're saying. They say the storyline could be resolved after the second, but we all want to see more. The, the reason I, I say that for the first film is I like the idea of it's a mystery what, what happens to Rocky at the end of that film. But the other films are a lot of fun. That's just like it's not the end of the world. I'm not saying that the other films ruined the first film, but from like a purely artistic standpoint, the first film would have been just just a little a little better if it was just on its own. I actually like Rocky Three more than Rocky Four, for example. I like the idea of Rocky and Apollo becoming friends. I like the idea that you have to like he has to change his style. Like I I, I like it actually better than Rocky Two as well. Oh, wow. There you go. Okay. All right. So over time, just like Kyle was saying, over time, the movie has gained a strong following and garnered more positive retrospective reviews. It was a commercial success as well. Grossing. Now, at the time, it grossed $270 million worldwide. At that time, the average movie ticket was $3 a ticket. Thus, they sold 90 million tickets. If that movie was released today, it would garner $720 million in ticket sales, the average price of a ticket for $10. Thus, to get that same amount, it's 700, sorry, it would be a 72 million tickets sold. So if it was released today with the same amount of tickets sold, that's where I'm going with this, sorry. Mm. So the same amount of tickets were sold today, it would be close to a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. That's how successful this movie is there. Does that make sense? So it, I had, it I had, to, yeah, I had to figure out Adjust so, for inflation. That's right. So not only just for inflation, but because ticket prices have gone up so high, the sales are down a little bit. So yes, it would have made mm. $720 million just strictly money-wise. However, they sold 90 million. So 90 million people saw or uh, some, or whether it's once or twice. So 90 million tickets were sold approximately in 1982. That same amount today would be over $900 million in ticket sales. Are you also saying that the average ticket price today is ten dollars. Because well, that's the average. Like that's I know. Low. Kyle said the same thing. Well, yes and no. It depends. Like you got to remember the eastern, the coastal cities. Uh, they're a little bit higher than Middle America, so that's the average across America. I mean, I don't live on the coast, and I think a ticket is like sixteen bucks. Let's say thirteen dollars then. Yeah. So give well, anyway. Give yeah. It, yeah. Give, but yeah, this is just the research I did. I, it said ten dollars was the average ticket across. Interesting. The US. Okay. But anyway, so there you go. That is a little bit of how successful this movie. Either way, this movie was a success by all by all stretches of the imagination, and probably not that expensive to make even today's money or back then money. It was fairly cheap to make. No CGI, no special effects, or just in a mm-hmm. ring. Most of the money probably went to Sly's pay. They uh, got some good outfits, you guys. I'm very excited. We're gonna we're gonna get to those. We'll get to those, of course. <laughs> uh, Donald just want to say that this was the first Rocky he saw in the theater, and me too, Donald. It was the first one I saw in the theater as a kid. Yep. Louise thinks how that they should have ended. Uh, with part three, wraps the perfect bow in the series. Good insight there from the listeners. A little trilogy. 
Yeah, yeah Rocky yeah. Four actually doesn't serve a purpose at all. I, like, it's my favorite. <laughs> I, I could rewatch that all day, every day. I love it so much. It, it, you know, and we'll, we've said it before, and we'll say it again. Rocky Four, when everyone says, what's your favorite Rocky film? 95% of the conversation is between four and one. No. It's almost split 50-50, too. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. four and one are 90 to 95% of the people's choices. There's a few outliers, like Kyle saying three or two. There's even the odd, odd person who says part five. I kid you not. And they mean it. So no, I'm not even joking. I've met those people. I think it very much depends on which movie you saw like growing up. The first one is amazing. But as a kid, I thought it was boring. It was boring as a kid. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to start the film. So today's episode will probably most likely just be the intro. Obviously, the montage will be a lot of time. We'll go as far as we can go. But I think the intro would be the nice little... You know, the oldest split screens, the, the montage intro. We're not going to do the recap of the fight. It's pointless. We've done this before. There's no point in recapping the fight, even though it's done in the film. We'll just get right to when the transition between, you know, he wins to the Eye of the Tiger song kicks in. So I want to talk about the Eye of the Tiger really quickly here. Eye of the Tiger is a song by the American rock band Survivor. It was released as a single from their third album with the same name and became famous as the theme song for the 19. 19- 1982 movie Rocky 3. The song was written by guitarist Frankie Sullivan and keyboardist Jim Pederick. Now, do you guys recall which song Stallone originally wanted but got, got denied? Was it the Queen song? Which song? Uh, uh, we Are the Champions? Nope. Or Another One Bites the Dust? Yes. You know what we need to do? We need to somehow get Another One Bites the Dust overlay music over top of that to see how that fits. I could guess I could see Another One Bites the Dust for when Rocky's knocking out all those people in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But then, like, the rest of the film, Another One Bites the Dust doesn't make any sense. Agreed. So, like, that's probably a good call that that didn't work out. But this is the first time we're hearing music in the Rocky films that not by Bill Conti or not made for the film. It's well, like an outside got, source. Sort of. Don't forget Frank Stallone's... Take it back. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. Did that pre exist the film or did he do it for the film though? He did that song for the album. It was on the original soundtrack. Yeah, okay. told by... I, I'm not counting that. He did, his, that. He did his, <laughs> 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 Trust me, nobody should count anything Frank Sloan does. Okay. <laughs> now the version that we hear in the film, folks, is actually the demo version because it includes tiger growls not found in the album version. Oh. I didn't realize there were tiger growls. I don't think I it. did either. I the Tiger became a huge hit. And I, how big? And this is surprising to me how big the song really was. Like, I know it was a big song, but it was a big song. So, I the Tiger became a huge hit in 82, receiving a lot of airplay on MTV and radio stations worldwide. It reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in the United States. It stayed there for six weeks in a row, making it Survivor's only song to top the chart. It was the second best selling single of 82, just behind. Do you want to have one of the guests, Rachel Maid, the host? 82, it was just behind. No, I don't know. There's so That's many. A, I would. I, I would. sure. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but is it a Queen song? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, who sings it, or would that give it away? Well, I'll say the person's name, but you'll guess it. Olivia Newton-John. Oh, what is the? The workout one. Yes, that's right. Um, Let's get physical. 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 <laughs> I want to get That physical. was the number one song. Is that weird? That song it was number is, one. It's it is weird. odd. You know, about Eye of the Tiger, have you guys ever been to um, or heard of, uh, listeners to, the Fever by Candlelight or Candlelight by Fever shows? They It's like small venues. They'll find like a cool venue and it's lit all just, it's like just a few people with like string instruments usually. Mm. They'll have Taylor Swift ones or Queen or, you know, yeah, classic rock on strings. And nice. it's they're really cool. They're really reasonably priced too. Eye of the Tiger was part of the, I mean, um, they probably had like 10 songs and they were all like really big rock songs. And Eye of the Tiger was one of them. It was really good. I don't really have a life, so that could exist where I am. And I just am not aware of it. <laughs> So the song remained in the top 10 for 15 weeks, which was one of the longest runs in the 80s. Survivor won a Grammy Award for Best Rock Performance by Duo or Group with Vocals for the song. In the UK, it also reached number one and stayed there for four weeks. I, the Tiger, was certified in the United States, signifying sales of over 2 million vinyl copies sold. By February 2015 now, so this was eight years ago, so it's more now, but it sold 4.1 million digital downloads in the United States alone. The song is considered one of the greatest hard rock songs of all time and was ranked 63rd by VH1. So there you go. A little bit of background regarding. Now, here's my hot take, though. 
I find the song boring. Well, give me No Easy Way Out by Robert Tepper any day of the week. That song does not ever get tiring. I don't know what it is about that song. I, I agree find... about the No Easy Way Out is amazing, but I, I think, think the Tiger's repeti- great. It's a great intro. I find it just repetitive. I just don't know what it is about that. There's no real bridge. It's just kind of very simple. It has a great start. It kind of kicks in. It starts the Rocky Three movie. I get it. And I we get a kick out of that moment. But without the montage behind it and the song by itself, it's kind of repetitive and blah. I don't know. I, I'm probably very alone on this. but No, I'm, I mean, maybe I'm a simpleton, but I quite love it. Like I, when it I, comes on in the car, I'll sing to it. It's one of those songs where if it comes on in the car, if it hits you by surprise, it's a nice little treat. Mm-hmm. But it, it probably is not a song that I would have on like a playlist that I listen no. to fairly regularly. No. Yeah, I think, is. though, it is, it is an excellent choice. For this, this film, I agree. This Especially that film, it works. Yeah. It works for the film. Absolutely. I can't be bothered to listen to this on my own. As people are mentioning the chat here, I remember when Ryan Rubin called out Tepper and going the distance. Our, our <laughs> first guest. Rubin and I, um, if you haven't already, you can go back and listen to the old episodes of uh, Going the Distance, the Rocky Series podcast. Ruben and I shat all over Robert Tepper <laughs> for so many episodes. And then we finally got to talk to him. Uh, the recording wasn't very good because I was still learning how to do conversations with or interviews with people over the internet. We actually told them that, that we could bury the hatchet. They didn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. And Robert Tepper was a really good sport about it. We just said that we made fun of him and then we're not going to do that anymore because we interviewed him. But And we were running short on time and I, I left out Angel of the City and people were like, what? What? What are you doing? <laughs> All right, take it easy. Take it easy. We'll get it in there. Well, thanks. Thank you, Robert. Hey there. Thanks, guys. You guys are really starting to really good. How how often do you do the podcast? you going to send me a copy? Yeah. Yeah, we'll send you the link when this episode comes out. And I want to say for open disclosure, we've had a running running joke. We pretend to be mad at you for... uh, for, (laughs) for, (laughs) I'm glad you like it. So it, it was an, it's an ongoing it's been an ongoing joke through our Rocky Four coverage where you interrupt our show with your music, okay. where we say that you made Rocky Four and not Stallone and things like that. We just want to let you know that it's all good fun, and so a lot of our listeners have been looking forward to this this episode of you coming on. You've been nothing but gracious and kind and and open with your stories, and we appreciate that. Well, thank you so much, and if you ever need me to do any IDs or. Do, do some verbal interruptions, I will. If you think <laughs> something funny. <laughs> that would be awesome. I would love that. Thank you so much, Robert. Yes, that would be great. Okay, guys. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Robert. Cheers. Thank Take you. Care. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, there you go, guys. That was Robert Tepper from the Rocky IV soundtrack, No Easy Way Out, and the Cobra soundtrack, Angel of the City. He was very kind. Sorry for the audio quality on the cell phones. Again, Mr. Tepper, thank you so much for your time. You were you're gracious. And it looks like we buried the hatchet, Ruben. Have we though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looks like Robert or Robert has has been kind of gracious to us. We're at the we're at the barrier of Robert hatch, uh, Robert Tepper hatchet. He didn't lose his Tepper on us. He didn't. <laughs> so so uh, Robert, good luck with all your future stuff. And again, I just want to uh, reiterate how influential that song has been in people's lives. You can't watch Rocky Four without getting excited for that Lamborghini Countach scene when he revs up the engine, the drum beat kicks in, and Robert Tepper's voice screams. It's just, you know, Ribbon, any closing thoughts before we close? Ding, ding. Anyways, he's a great guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I told him that. And, I would have not said anything. I would be like, yeah, we think you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. I even forget what kind of the jokes were about, but we just kind of always say that Robert Tepper, you know, ruin, ruins our podcast, and he would... He would uh, or skip out on interviews or something like that. We just kind of made fun of him and his hair. Oh, his, yeah, his yeah, hair. Just, I can't even picture what he looks like. Yeah, he's a great guy. He, he's all clean cut now and he's uh, old, not older. I guess he's 60 now, 60 something now. But yeah, uh, for the sake of copyright and YouTube release, of course, I Tiger will be blocked right away. So there you go. So, uh, but I do want to play just a little bit of the transition, just a little bit. Hopefully, it doesn't get claimed because it doesn't take long to get claimed. I just I like the transition between the original outro music of Fight, and it kind of kicks into that mo- you know the the final round, whatever music by Bill Conti, and it kind of kicks into that modern era music, which I think is part of the reason why they did that was to show that we're now into a modern age from seventy nine mm-hmm. to eighty two. Mm-hmm.
So that doesn't get you pumped. It's so good. Do I have to say it a hundred times? It works for the film. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so right away, though, we get the fireworks going. Rocky is not just a champion of the world. He's champion champion of the world world. He's beyond a boxing champion now. We've like, we have fireworks celebrating his stardom, and he's like the world star. He, he's really likable because of his like Cinderella story. And he also proved through two long fights that he didn't like get a lucky shot and just get the championship out of a fluke, right? Like he really earned it. He came from nothing. Like he captured everyone's imagination. So I could see why people would like him so much. George Washington Duke in five was he's a people's champion. Isn't that who said yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, he really is. Okay, now we're going into they uh, they they want killers. They was good fighters, but they wasn't killers. That's right. So we're seeing that. So right now, we don't know that scene is coming. So when you're a first-time viewer, you actually don't know that. that, But that's actually what we're seeing right now. We're we're seeing. Was there people uh, around, though? Was there a fighter that was like Clubber or like someone who could beat Rocky really easily? Like, I, I wonder with that scene if Mickey really picked the easiest opponents or if he just... I don't know there wasn't anyone around to really challenge Rocky. Like there wasn't an Apollo Creed type person or a Clubber Lang type person out there. Do you mean like in real life? Who did they pull from? Rocky's fighting these ten guys, right? Right, ten ten and, title defenses, and they're not setups. They're not killers like Clubber. Was okay. there someone like Clubber? Someone else like Clubber? that was out there that they ducked. I think within the movie universe, I think we're just led to believe. Whatever the navigation Mickey did, it just it just steered clear away from either people, specifically Clubber, because Mickey knew Clubber. We'll see, we'll see that later. But also just anyone, maybe anyone like him. But Clubber was the only one who had the balls to call him out on it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. So now we're seeing, of course, the, the fights. I, it's hard to count. I don't think we necessarily see all 10 title defenses here. We can do a count. There's one right now. But we're seeing, like, the montage of Rocky fighting. Mickey in the corner, Stitch Man with him. So he's got the same team from Rocky Two or are in his corner. And he easily wins. Like look what he does to these people. He's pounding that guy to oblivion. It's all over the top. He's like a super he's a superhero now. Rocky is fighting decent fighters. Like they're not really low ranked, obviously shitty fighters. Like maybe a couple of them were. He's fighting good fighters. It shows that Rocky is he belongs in the top of the heavyweight division. I think what they're saying with like things being handpicked or fighting these bums is that you're not necessarily fighting the elite of the elite. There's someone out there that could probably beat you still. The first scene we see here of Polly. So here's the first scene of Burt Young playing Polly. Already he's like, if you're watching this for the first time, we left from Rocky too. It's like, he's telling Rocky, I'll take care of the house. I'll take care of the house. You got it. You don't worry about it. Uh, Yeah. I'll take care of everything. What were viewers, first time viewers, thinking at this moment? Did they recognize right now why is Polly angry? Why is he upset? They must have had cut scenes because it is way too stark of a contrast. The first time we're like, to your point, Ryan, he's immediately annoyed. He's like, oh, Adrian's all happy. He sees the show uh, that it's kind of for show in this montage. I could see them showing Polly doing that after like the fifth title defense that he's like, oh, geez, here we go again. And then after the montage, the scene that we get about Polly's really got a huge chip on his shoulder. I think there has to have been scenes that were cut because it doesn't really make sense. Because what we're seeing in the montage is whoever Rocky fought there was his first title defense. Because it says here, the and it says Rocky wins first title defense. So we're actually seeing Adrian cheering her husband, loving that he's a champion. Polly right away is jealous already that Rocky's won a first title defense. Like, why is he bummed out about that? Oh, yeah. Rocky. Okay, I think I could give a little bit of a defense here, although okay. I do generally agree with you guys. There's probably quite a bit of time between when Rocky beat Apollo in the first title defense, especially given that Rocky was beaten near to death. Rocky would have gotten an insane amount of attention. So I'm guessing Rocky's attention and popularity and wealth was kind of grinding on Polly for like, this could have been a year in between when he fought Apollo in his first title defense. There's probably a lot of stuff that happened in that year. Like they would have moved into a way nicer house, which I guess Polly doesn't live in. We find that out, which you don't know that when you're first viewing the film and you could see Adrian is already totally changed. 
She yeah. has her hair nice. And she's in nice oh, yeah. clothes. So like they've moved up in the world, obviously, even though it's the first title defense. This fight with Apollo, he probably made millions of dollars off it. He's huge major celebrity now. And it's kind of going back to more of the Polly we knew from the first film, who was jealous when Rocky, when he was watching the press conference with Rocky. Polly's probably still working at like the meat factory or whatever, the meat packing plant where Rocky's living this like luxurious life. So- he's on the docks. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's right. Yeah. Well, the docks. He, yeah, well, he kind of goes from the docks yeah. and then somehow back to the meat. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I know. These it's, '80s movies are real quick. They're extra tight. There had to have been a deleted scene because otherwise, it just seems more obvious to show him doing that after, like maybe the third, yeah, fight of the montage or something. Yeah, like I could never see Paulie clapping like Adrian. You could maybe see him like having a good time, like having a drink. But he in did his when he won and... the belt, though. When he originally won the belt, he was crying and hugging yeah. Adrian. He was ecstatic. Well, now he he's like six too. months later, he's all pissed <laughs> off. That... Yeah. I think Rocky's rise to fame made him jealous. Yeah. That's my guess. So the next fight that we see here is the tonight on closed circuit, which means officially what that means. I understand it now. Closed circuit is they would show this fight like pay-per-view uh, in bars and what have you. Pool halls, I, I, bars. You could. I don't know if you could get it at home per se no, back then. No, I think you'd have to go to a but, bar. But bar, or yeah, yeah. That's right. And Music Hall Radio City, it only holds 6,000 people. So I find it odd that Rocky's doing a title defense at a... Wouldn't that be a small venue for a world championship fight? The fight is somewhere else, perhaps. But Radio City Music Hall has it on closed circuit. Um, you know what I mean? Like, you can buy a ticket to go watch the sh- watch the fight. That's an interesting theory. So you're saying 6,000 people would watch it at the hall. Yeah. People from all over. The world, obviously. So who knows where the actual fight is? But did you see that who on the marquee that Joe yeah. Joe Zach is his father in law? And he was referenced in the first film when they're going through the books. And, oh yeah, and he's, he's like Joe Zach's a good prospect. That's right. Good enough prospect that he indeed is fighting Rocky. That's a good callback. Champion. That's right. But he wasn't uh, a ranked contender back then, though. He was just a prospect back then because like, he wasn't considered originally. To fight Apollo. So there's mm-hmm. Joel Zek there, who does not look like anything like his father-in-law. No. <laughs> they took some liberties. So, because uh, for our listeners, Joel, Joel Zek, the character in the film, is black, but Sly at the time was married to Sasha Zek. She'll be having a cameo later on in this film. So this title offense happens, whatever time has passed. Now, Paul, he's openly sort of hiding his drinking at the venue. So he's drinking at the venue. So now we're seeing as an audience. Okay, he's bitter and he's a drunk again. We're back to Rock, Rocky, the first film. I yeah, understand. and it's not like they don't serve alcohol there. But he's, he's like, that's not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't have a beer. No, I have to drink spirits straight out of the bottle. <laughs> In, in a paper bag. Like loaded. Is that five roses there? It's not. Yeah. And it's four roses. It's a cheaper. This is J and B, which is cheaper, I think. Or maybe not at the time, because at the time, four roses, I don't think was good. But four roses is a bourbon. And J and B is a blended Scotch whiskey. So oh. I don't know why the different liquor. I don't well, I don't know. Like to change it up, you know. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Maybe this is a uh, at the venue drink. Type thing. Maybe, maybe. All right. So now we got uh, Rocky winning. I guess at, as if I'm tracking, this is the second title defense. Again, I don't know if we see all ten or if we mm-hmm. see more. I can't remember. It happens pretty fast. I love how he's holding up Mickey. <laughs> Poor Mickey. This was probably the start of his heart attack moment here when he Rocky's carrying him out of the ring. It probably wasn't good for old Mickey's heart here. On that point, I feel like there was actually a scene in Rocky two where we're shown Mickey being really out of breath at Mm. one of the fights, probably the final fight sometime. It was almost like they started to show it even in Rocky two. Oh, let's go back and do that season again and we'll see. (laughs) What's the seating capacity, Kyle, if you don't mind looking that up while we play this for the seating capacity of Caesar's palace. But I like your theory there, Katie. That's the only thing I can think of because they did show closed circuit at that music hall. Why would they show that? You're right. Maybe it's playing there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. And now we're Caesar's Palace. He's fighting, I think, now his third opponent. It's 19,500 for boxing. Oh, there you go. So it's legit. Okay. There you go. So he's fighting Caesar's Palace. And now this is our first shot of Clubber uh, in the audience. And of course, audiences would have known already via the trailers, whatever, that Mr. T is the antagonist in this film. So we can see him now in the crowd watching 
the fight as you would watching your what you would hope as a contender, future contender. So the person he's fighting, no, we don't know the name of this individual he's fighting right now. We got Big Yank Ball. Oh, something. it is now. Is that like a porno name or something? I think so. <laughs> so he's fighting Big Yank Ball right now. That's right. <laughs> well, why would they name him this? I don't. Come on. There's not even in parentheses. Like the big's not in parentheses. Is his name Yank? Is his last name Ball? Which is a real last name. Ball's last name. Mm-hmm. Lucille Ball, for example. So that's a real last name. But Big Yank, they must have known what they were doing. They're not consistent with what needs to be in quotations and what doesn't. Yeah, fair enough. All right. So Big Yank Ball was the number one contender. Was which is funny because imagine if Big Yank won, would Clubber then be like, "All right, I'm gonna pity, I'm gonna pity this fool because I'm gonna take what he's got." It, where does it say he's number one? Did I miss that? No, the title fight. Well, you don't have to be number one contender to be a title to have a title fight. Oh, okay. Well, what do I like, know? You could fight a lower rank contender, like fifth okay. or something like that. But the point is, if Big Yank won, then all of a sudden Clubber's energy would have to be focused on the new champion. It's just, it's just funny. There's an alternate universe where one of these people could have beaten Rocky, mm-hmm. and in that alternate universe, Clubber would just been. Then they still could have had the retirement statue for Rocky, even though he wasn't champion anymore. Would Clubber still gonna? Hey, woman, I know you're. No, I know your mantle is the champion anymore, but I still have the speech I wanted to share. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, I gotta say that that's actually your best impression yet. <laughs> that was the best one so far. Uh, well, now you're gonna be in my head. I, I can't do it anymore. It's over. I was well, actually. I, it was pretty good. I I, didn't, <laughs> I don't think it was very good. Are, I, are well, you being facetious, Kyle, or not? <laughs> well, okay, it's for, for Ryan. You know what I, you know, wow, boy. I went from a solid compliment from Kyle to Katie shitting all over it to <laughs> then, I was Kyle, just then, Kyle kind of, then, then Kyle going back to, well, for Ryan, it was pretty good. Like, okay, you know what, guys? I'm done. All right. I did. We love you, Ryan. I wow. was hoping that you would have greeted me this morning with, hey, woman. <laughs> oh, we should have. When we get to that episode, yeah. we'll treat you accordingly as Clever would treat you. <laughs> now, he punches this big yank ball, and he flies in the air. Kyle, you've watched a lot of box matches. Has anyone ever left the canvas both feet in the air from a punch that you're aware of? Um, You know what? I don't know about both feet in the air, but the way he knocked him out was very reminiscent of like Mike Tyson in his prime, where he would hit someone with like an insane body shot and then hit him with an uppercut like that, and the person would go flying. I've seen more impressive Mike Tyson knockouts than these montage knockouts. So granted, Mike Tyson's a very special case. He's not normal, so it's like it wouldn't be typical in boxing for that to happen. But yeah, like you, you could see someone fly like that. Now, when the guy flew up in the air, when a big yank ball went up in the air, Clubber stood up at the same time. Now, did he stand up in anger or actually like, oh, wow, Rocky is powerful? Because he just stands up like, oh. It seemed like he was almost angry that Rocky was powerful, if that makes sense. I, I think he's disgusted. That's like the look I get from his face is like disgust. Like this is by bullshit. what? By what? Well, though? I think Clubber has a huge ego. So he's convinced he's the man. And he does not respect Rocky at all. He knows he's better than Rocky. And he does not, he for sure does not respect Rocky's opponents. When he sees Rocky knock this guy out, He's like, this is crap. Like, I'd be able to destroy this guy. Like, he fact, sees that it's a sham. Like, he's like, these are setups. Like, he's like, piss now. That's like, what I have I'm to thinking. keep watching. Yeah. Are the only people who know these are handpicks, so to speak, are Mickey, Adrian, and Clubber? Is anyone writing in, in the boxing reports that Rocky is not like, you know what I mean? It seems like Rocky's wholly unaware this is happening until mm-hmm. that, until yeah. Clubber's statue visit. So I find it interesting that Clubber seems to understand these are handpicked or these aren't real fighters. So he calls out Rocky for being a paper champion, but none of the people that report the sport called Rocky out of it that he would have read. Is there someone else other than Clubber around that Rocky could be fighting that is higher caliber? And would Clubber run into that guy in his ascent to the top? Because it seems like Clubber's knocking out people very easily on As his well. rise. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, like, I'm wondering if this is almost kind of like a Mason Dixon type of situation where you're at the top of the division and you're d- the division sucks. You're not fighting anyone that's good because they're not there. Yeah. I, I'm just Mickey confused. Seems I'm... To think they're handpicked for Rocky safety. So, it's like one of those things that's like a very weird gray area. That's right. Because we see Clubber. Yeah. We're led to believe that Clubber's rise was legit and he's fighting all these hardcore out of prison type characters. And Rocky <laughs> seems to be fighting people who just started boxing and they're going to have to eventually meet. But yeah, how's that possible that Rocky can 
that none of his fighters are good, but all clubbers were legit fighters. Why do you think clubbers were? Because that's really how good. he acts. That's what he's saying. Oh. I, I'm the one that clawed my way to the top. I had to fight monsters in the ring type mentality. Oh. I'm the one that had to like. I had no real nothing. I had to do this and like. So yeah, clubbers seems to be the typical like I'm entitled to this that you have and you're there and you're you're defending your champion, but your paper champion, everything's being spoon fed to you. But everyone I'm fighting to get to you to be the contender that you need to fight have been real fights. But that's what Kyle's saying is who's the who's the real fighters if both these guys are beating everyone easily. I uh, yeah, pr- I personally don't think there is anyone. I'm just going to assume there isn't. Yeah, I did not assume that the people that Clubber was fighting were any better than the people that Rocky were fighting. Was just fighting. by hit the way he talks about how yeah. Rocky defends himself against these are still contenders. Like Big Yank Ball was a contender. These are real contenders. Like Kyle was saying, there's not to be the number one contender, but there's no way they're number thirty. These have to be, or also sports writers are going to say, that's what I'm getting is. There would the, be sports they were, writers that say, oh, exactly. these people aren't really that great. But that's what I'm saying is like Rocky is legit. When Rocky gets told by Mickey that have the big discussion, which will be a whole new episode. He's confused, perplexed by this revealing. So that would mean that either there have been people writing about this already. And somehow Rocky is totally ignorant to anything being written about him. But Adrian and Mickey it's my impression they were both protecting them as a husband and a fighter. Well, Polly knows it too. I it's almost putting Rocky in a light that makes him seem He just doesn't read anything? Like are there well, are He there, is he's kind of dumb though. Yeah. Right? He's yeah. kind there's of no dumb. Way, there's no way that nothing cuz he he watches the news. He watches the sports things. He did it even when he was not a champ. He, he loves the sport. He has to be around it. If he believes he's the champ, and then it's like some guy, some media guy on the news is saying, oh, Rocky's fighting these bums. He's not a good fighter. Rocky will just say, you know, when I was fighting Apollo, people didn't believe in me either. You know, I'm not going to listen to these guys. He's not going to be objective. Because now he's he's a star. There could be a degree of everybody's kind of a yes man. Nobody critiques the star. Everything they do is great. Even like Muhammad Ali would would say openly, like actually there's a video, I I wish I could just show it here, where this reporter or this interview, like this talk show host guy asked Muhammad Ali, it's like, why are you fighting these guys that are are obviously not in your class? Ali's so good at like talking to people and deflecting that he easily handled that situation. Mm. But even Ali later in his career was like, yeah, I'm not going to fight like these hardcore guys late this late in my career. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm, there you go. Okay. Joe Lewis, who is one of the greatest boxers of all time, he uh, used to have this thing which they people called Bum of the Month Tour, where he would like fight once a month against people who are like complete shit and he would knock them out. Everyone knew like exactly what was happening and it was just like accepted. Who was that? Joe Lewis. Oh, interesting. The Brown Bomber. That was his I nickname. I, yes, I did that. Terrible. I did that this morning. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we, now we see, you know, Adrian and Rocky. They're just they're just simpatical right now because you know the first two films they weren't regarding the boxing career. Mm-hmm. But right now we see Adrian just loving these fights because she knows her man is not in any trouble, so she's just enjoying the yeah. spectacle. Of, I love how she's enjoying. Rocky committing damage to other humans that she doesn't want her husband to go through. So she just loves watching the the carnage of other people as long as it's not her husband. You see Rocky not taking two, like you'll see he has like a cut on his eye or something. Sure. Rocky never again shows the physical punishment that was given to him from Apollo. Even the Ivan Drago beating, which you would think would be worse than the Apollo fights because Rocky just took a ton of hits. Like his face isn't that bad after Mm -hmm. compared to fighting Apollo. So like he's coming out of these fights looking pretty good. He's not like hospitalized after them. Like uh, no, no, he he gets injured. He gets this way. He gets injured. Well, now that he's got his face fixed up handsome, he wants to showcase that. That's true. I do actually have a hard time believing Adrian's this into him fighting. Like I know he what is. you're She's saying. Kissing I, back at him in the ring, oh. she, he kisses her with the gloves. He and she kisses blow blow does a blow kiss back to him. They're showing their love. They're so happy. She's wearing nice clothes. She's got all these different outfits for every fight. She's just dressed to the nines. It, it's insane though because it, Rocky should be disabled at this point, right? <laughs> like Rocky's eyes should be fucked up beyond all recognition. Mm-hmm. It, she should be saying, "Now oh, look, we have a ton of cash." We have a ton of money. We do not need to do this for the money. 
please retire. Don't risk going into the ring. I know what you're saying before about like how she knows they're kind of handpicked, so she's not too worried. But I feel someone like Adrian would be paranoid. Like, oh, what if this guy gets like a lucky shot mm-hmm. and hits Rocky in the eye just so, and he's blinded now? What are we going to do? Paulie's behavior, Adrian has changed, everyone's changed. You can't choose who you are, Adrian. Rocky Five Adrian is concerned about her husband's health over money. Rocky Three Adrian is not. She loves that cash. She oh, loves yeah. the lifestyles. She's, She's right behind. It. It's true, but I do think to some degree she doesn't feel there's really danger, true danger. Yeah, because she's no longer fighting Apollo. Uh, we're on the next part of this uh, fight. I think this is the fourth contender we're seeing. I have lost. Yeah, track. A white guy. First yeah, one. I think he, it's German. Yeah, European yeah. champion. Yeah. So they show them hug at the end of the you know knockdown. I, I you know what I think they're showing here. I think they're showing that in this moment with the hug is that it's the first international type fight. So it's kind of like the bridging of nations, you know? Ah, good call. He's fighting a German. It's all in good fun. Yeah, He's a good guy. Rocky knocks out the German champ, captures hearts of European fight fans. See, there you go. He's just likable, right? He has that charisma. I love reading the write-up behind under the, uh, there's the, the writing has nothing to do with the the captions. I love it. I love it. The they did not anticipate podcasts covering this. No, we won't. Movie. We won't do that ad nauseum. I know Rocky Minute did it as well, and I think we even did it on Going the Distance podcast. But yes, the the write ups underneath the headlines have nothing to do. This is from okay. the London Examiner. Rocky uh, Rocky knocks out German champ. Yeah. So when I was doing my timeline analysis for these films, I would have to like look at each one of these articles because a lot of them have dates Ooh. have written dates which is to me written form is the best way to know a timeline but a lot of them do have like the date of the actual like fill the time of filming on them which i thought thought was interesting this movie really gets into our time warp rocky three there's a Ooh. lot of questions well that's the problem because now this is his fourth fight okay now fight number four then we're going to go really fast here. Fight number five knocks this guy out. That's five, six right here. Six right here. Right. Five, six, seven right there. And each one is a different magazine cover. Seven just got knocked out. Eight got knocked out. Nine. Nine. Ten. There's ten. the tenth one. I think we counted 13 if I remember correctly. Some were title defenses and some were just exhibition fights is what I think. Oh. So, so when the uh, when he knocks out the German champ, because it, like I think Kyle's mentioned, they don't share the same... It was probably an exhibition fight. It was a mm, shake of hand. All I know is he fights, I think, 13 people in this montage. So it doesn't uh, make sense. Yeah. We just saw a scene there of Adrian just, of course, we're hearing the Eye of the Tiger, Tiger music and Adrian slash Talia Shire, she's dancing in her seat. So it's almost like she can hear the music being played. She's so excited to be at a box. This is like the 10th, at least the 10th title defense or box match since he won the championship in part two and she is just on cloud nine with every fight she just cannot get enough of this yeah she does that look really nice adrian and rocky three is the hottest that she's of all the films so she's peak she's 36 years old i think she looks fantastic sly is also 36 they're both the same mm-hmm. age i think talia shire is so stunning in this film so all her outfits and everything are just great so this is the big classic scene here where, where rocky comes in for a big left hook and he hits this guy, and he obviously is real contact on this. And a lot of these, my understanding, a lot of these boxers that are in the ring with Sly, they're stunt doubles. There's are not doubles, they're stuntmen. So that's oh. why they're taking these hits and stuff. They're not oh. actual boxer boxers. So this guy getting hit by Sly, watch, because he actually makes contact. Watch this. Boom. Ooh, on the neck or something, yeah. too. That looks like it hurt. The real hit. Yeah. He hit him. So these are stunt guys. Obviously, he went, you know, he moved his head with the hit. Like, he knew that was coming from Sly. It was rehearsed. But there was contact enough that spray or water leaves the head. A lot of these guys were stuntmen that were in the ring. Good call. So, again, another guy goes down, flailing his arm, hitting the turnbuckles. And then we have TVs showcasing. Like, you know how they used to do this TV stacked on each other in store displays Mm -hmm. to sell TVs? So, we're seeing that now. Of course, the 80s, very indulgent 80s. All these TVs showing the Rocky fights. Clever. Now, how is Clever affor- affording all these fights? Mm-hmm. Not just going to the fight, but traveling to get to the fight. Yeah, because I can imagine in the 80s, maybe a ticket to a big fight. Everything is just so exorbitant now, like concert tickets, fight sporting events. It's. I feel like it probably wasn't outrageously expensive, but yeah, the travel would have been. Plus, he has so, good seats, too. It's not like yeah. he's way back there. It's just one of those things where they don't think about when they're making the Yeah, movie. so he is so obsessed, essentially, with Rocky's 
title. This is like the, the 13th fight. Clubber's been to at least half of them, according to the montage. He's been to at least half of them. Polly as well, as well has been dragged. To every, maybe he's just sick of being dragged to fights because Polly is miserable in every fight. At this moment, we don't know why he's so miserable. We find out later why. But right now, as a viewer, we're like, why is Polly so upset? Clubber is upset. So Rocky's won the fight. He's he's bowing to the audience, and Clubber's like, I can't handle this crap. <laughs> he's walking out of the stadium to beat the parking rush. A Clubber reminds me of. You know when you like someone, you have a crush on them, and then they start dating or being interested in someone else, and you get like a jealousy or like Mm -hmm. a possessiveness or something like that? He's like that on steroids with Rocky. Like he's like this weird stalker girl. They like can't leave Rocky alone. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, we're just so used to this is how Mr. T looks. But when the world was introduced to him, I mean, he is the most unique looking. Like who, yeah, having who a had their hair in, that way? Yeah, yeah, having a mohawk back in the 80s was very, especially for like a mainstream movie. And no one even talks about the mohawk itself in the movie. It's just, this is Mr. T's hair and you deal with it. There's one Mm -hmm. scene though. There's one scene in the whole film. It's so hilarious when Rocky rubs his mohawk with his glove in the final fight. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Plus it's like he, he dresses kind of odd. For instance, he had feather earrings in. Yeah. And he has like this native American thing. I think one of his jackets is like that too. Like, it's very fringy. Odd. Yeah. Everything about him is just like, wow, that is a character. And he's huge. He's this yeah. hulking solid muscle. Like it is a really well cast. Agreed. Villain. This is the first time we've seen the Rocky films. We are actually now seen pre opponent montage fighting of a future opponent of Rocky. We never saw that with Apollo. Mm-hmm. We never saw what Paul did to other people. So now we're seeing what, will be the future against Rocky. So we're seeing as an audience right away, like the first five minutes of the film, we're seeing this guy who will be the future as a first time viewer. We don't even know that Rocky is going to lose the fight against. I remember when I first saw this film as a kid, I remember thinking, what he's fighting them already. It didn't even mm-hmm. occur to me that he could right. lose. This is uh, interesting to the audience right now, seeing the kind of the damage that, that uh, clever is doing. So guys hanging on the ropes, Kyle, and he's got his arm over the rope. Are you allowed to keep punching him while he's hanging on the rope? <laughs> okay. You know what? I don't think so. Being punched while you're going down, if you're leaning against the rope and you're kind of crouched down, you could for sure keep punching someone. For example, there's an interesting video, Tommy Morrison, who is Rocky related. He got hit by this guy and knocked out, but his arm got stuck in the rope. Oh. And so he wasn't falling. Like he should, like, you know, if you get knocked out, you fall mm-hmm. around and you can't get hit anymore. But his arm got stuck in the rope. So he's like kind of half conscious stuck in there standing up and this guy is just hitting him mercilessly Oof. tommy morrison is like legit unconscious getting his face kicked in like i don't know who is the referee sorry that went to the lou filippo school <laughs> or refereeing but so i love this headline so we see the first fight like as a viewer we're seeing one of the first fights that clubber's doing during the same time that rocky's defending his championships it says clubber lang this is the newspaper headline clubber lang mauls yafe for brutal six straight knockouts so now we're seeing a little bit of like oh this guy's on the climb this clubber lang is on the climb it's, it's brutal i love how it's the brutal mm-hmm. knockout both clubber and rocky just win fights by knockout <laughs> like you, you, every single person you see Rocky fight, True. he knocks out. So Rocky's never won a boxing match on points for being a skilled boxer. That's like true. he relies he on loses that way. Knock- he loses that way. Sure. He relies on being able to knock someone unconscious. And so now we see Clever Lang. He's winning all his fights by KO also. Of course. So here's a little bit of the write-up underneath the headline. (laughs) They had no idea if he would. Many persons feel at this stage that some legal action is forthcoming, but a new, but now it becomes uh, common knowledge that there is pressure from the inside, which will materially change the aspect of the blow. Is this so funny? They had like had nothing to do with the clever leg run. I love it. These poor people with these prop department people were like they just swapped the headline. uh, That's hilarious. Yeah, Yeah, that's what I do because it's like oh, it's going to be on the screen for two seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can read it. Yeah, little did they know. Oh, it comes in nice and clear here. There yeah. you go. <laughs> so, yeah, here's another one. Oof. Now, yeah, that's not legal, what he just did there. For our listening audience, guy was trying to get up. He got knocked down to his knee and tried to get up again. And Clubber knocks him down while he's trying to get up, which was actually what happened to 
Adonis Creed uh, from Victor Drago mm-hmm. in Creed 2. That was an illegal hit. That's the only reason why Clubber didn't, sorry, Adonis didn't lose the belt is because it was a disqualification. So mm-hmm. theoretically, Clubber should have been disqualified there. Good point. 100%. And then he like manhandles the ref after this. The judges yeah. probably let him win just so they wouldn't get beat up in the parking lot or whatever. <laughs> well, the previous fight he's shown pushing the ref away too because the ref's trying to Sorry. step in in some way. So this is the start of something new in Rocky, something that has never been done yet. The horish product placement that will occur in this and the next film. Rocky 3 is brought to you by Nike and Rocky 4 is brought to you by Adidas. <laughs> yes. And Hugo Boss to a lesser extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and not just Nike. Well, now we have a commercial, credit card commercial, which is American Express. We're seeing now that Rocky from the second film, remember when he couldn't read the dummy cards? Now he's able to, to spout off commercials. He's he's not only fixed up his face real nice, but his brain has had surgery as well. His brain has now been, he's well, now able to read and write apparently. He's been practicing reading. Like he's he was practicing with Adrian reading those books, and time has gone by. Like this could be years after Rocky Two. He's probably also working with the producer that's not a prick. So all those things coming together, you know, he probably worked really hard to be able to read on that commercial. But yeah, this, he became civilized. He's got is this the last and... of his real hair. I w- I don't know. Maybe. Well, probably four too, because it's you start. So? You can, it's his real hair in four. I think. Okay. You can see where it might be lighting up a little bit. You can kind of even see it here. He's poofing it out and he's fluffing yeah. it out, but you can see. Yeah. All right. So he's got his American Express card out. This is American Express card commercial. And he's reading very well. While he's doing commercials, Clubber's just chewing through the competition. Clubber Lang now ranked eighth. And it shows a concerned look of Mickey. Mickey's now also watching the rise of Clubber. So he's aware. And then we see a, another quick scene here of him just manhandling this poor guy into the corner. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> it's effective because we're like, this guy is a killer. There was a comment in the before from Louise, I think, and we've talked about it before, but Clubber Lang is George Foreman. Mm. And, and this George Foreman's rise was like this. He knocked out everybody. Right? Ernie Shavers is known as the most powerful puncher, but George Foreman is right up there. Even when George Foreman came back in his 40s, Evander Holyfield, when he hit him in the face when they fought, said, I actually believed that he knocked all my teeth out. Oh, wow. And that's when Foreman punched him way, way past his prime. The Foreman was devastating. No one could beat him. Rocky's now part of some sort of telethon. They always have celebrities come on who do a little bit of a spot over the 12 hour, whatever, 24 hour donation thing. And you got four or five phones there. All these ladies are working the phones, taking donations. And this poor girl behind Rocky, she said, look, she looked really sad and awkward. Yeah. Rocky something. What does it say? Rocky. Rocky loves you. Rocky loves you. Oh, good eyes. I think you can go to jail for getting here to wear that. (laughs) (laughs) So she's uh, holding a microphone. So I wonder what her speaking part was that we don't get to see. And because Rocky's throwing, you know, shadow punches boxing with this little other boy next to them. Again, he's fun with the kids. He's easy with the kids. Split screened with Clever. Taking shots to the face on purpose, showing that Clever could take a punch. Mm showed him playing with the kids a little bit and then he turns the camera all kind of serious you know today we're raising money for uh what do you think they're raising money for stickball better equipment the girls and boys club of philadelphia i don't know now here's an interesting thing that happens very quickly mm-hmm. so they're having a birthday party for their kid and look who's there or who isn't there mr Polly. Polly's not at the party mickey is well, we just don't see him. But yeah, I think it Polly ha- had a good relationship with the kid, right? Mm-hmm. I know, but I but okay, but there's a Christmas scene coming up and Polly's not there yet either. So mm. we're th- I think this is part of the problem because Mickey moved into the house. So they're throwing a birthday party. You're right, you can say Polly's sure he's getting a beer from the fridge, but I think it's supposed to showcase that Polly's not there, Mickey's yeah. at the party. Yeah, that's a good point. See? And there's the dancing Santa, that's Mickey. Yeah. Little dirt bike in the house. Look at all those gifts for this kid, spoiled brat. So they have a dirt bike or like a BMX bike for the kid. And then in the living room as well, they have an actual motorcycle, a motorcycle in the living room. How? Like it's for Rocky. The motorcycle is for him. So did Adrian, I guess, have some workers deliver it during. Yeah, I make it happen. They'll hide it in the house. At some point they went to bed as a couple in their palatial mansion. 
How did they sneak the bike there? For- <laughs> Adrian could bring that bike in whenever, the week yeah. before, and hide it somewhere. The house is that big that you could probably hide it. Did her and Mickey roll it in from wherever the hiding spot on the same floor? Workers did. They have help now. Morning, it's the living though. room. How do they sneak in between? Well, you, you can roll a bike. It's not that yeah, hard. Yeah, I feel like All I right. could physically do it's that. It's on wheels. I'm, 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 I'm outnumbered it, again. I mean, I hear what you're saying. It is like... Because she's like, look at this beautiful fur jacket you gave me. She's, He's like, yeah, look at this beautiful bike you gave me with the helmet in my hand and the bow on it. So like, it's gifted to him. He saw it when he came down with the kid who's dancing with Mickey right now in the sand outfit. Like, it's just like... I don't know, but I know it's showing it's showing how much money they have. This is the kind mm-hmm. of money. This these are their Christmas gifts. I get it. Rocky's financial ruin was inevitable, even if he didn't have a crooked accountant. It is a real common thing in sports when you have people who are not used to having a lot of money or any money at all. When they get a lot of money, especially athletes, they spend like they're going to be earning that money. Yeah, I know. Yeah, for yeah. decades and decades and decades, when in reality, their their sporting career is pretty short. And I understand mm-hmm. he makes loads of money off commercials and yes. stuff too. Yeah, I think it's only a matter of time before he fucked up and lost all the money. Fair. And so the DeLorean, pit- DeLorean, how eighties is that? Yeah, so there's a DeLorean. This is three years before Back to the Future, so there you go. It's just showcasing the ads, motorcycle ads, camera ads, slides the face of the Maserati and DeLorean, which is odd that he's two, a face to two yeah. different car companies, which is mm-hmm. odd. Well, I don't know if they're direct competitors in the sense, right? If, if the people buying the Maserati would be interested in the DeLorean and vice versa. Cover of GQ. With the watch. So Rocky Balboa goes Western. It's on GQ. So funny. <laughs> That's odd because like Stallone himself wears like Western gear or he does now. I don't know if he did in the eighties, but Rocky doesn't. We never see Rocky wear Western clothes. I think he'll do it if you pay him enough. Oh yeah. yeah maybe. The idea of that. This is another George Foreman comparison. You see clever punching the punching bag and it has like a ton of duct tape around it. Well, George Foreman used to practice his punch on these punching bags and his punch was so powerful, there'd be like this permanent dent in the bag, and he'd be ripping bags apart. They would have to tape the bags over and over again, destroy them over and over again. And I don't know if they did that intentionally for this clever scene. I think it's either that or they show that like he is training somewhere where they have no means to replace punching bags, so they have to duct tape it. But either way, it gives off the George Foreman vibe for sure. Look how quick this frame was i had to like psycho click my mouse to pause it there's no one in the theaters has anyone seen this have you ever seen this right here no it's like a subliminal message jeans and yeah. he's like showing his butt yeah <laughs> it looks it looks very gay like <laughs> which is fine by the way but rocky can take it and he's like presenting his ass <laughs> to the <laughs> thing it's like so can Tony Lamas, which I guess is Jeeds. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. Well, apparently. quick Google search. A lot of it's coming up cowboy boots right now, which would tie into his goal Western. But mm-hmm. it says Rocky can take it. Dot dot dot. So can his Tony Lamas. That's so quick. I had to like psycho pause to get this still shot. There's no one in the theaters that would have caught. There's not one person out of those 90 million tickets sold that left the theater going, "Hey, did you catch the Tony Lamas ad?" Mm-mm. Subliminal message, my friends. This is literal subliminal messages. All right, of course, now they're cutting to he's a uh, cover of Wheaties. He's the cover. He's uh, hockey and Gatorade. And like you're saying, Kyle, all these are real products. So within the universe of the film, showcasing how much Rocky is getting from uh, all these companies to be a face for their company. But also these are real products being showcased in the film seen by millions. So it's, it's a double whammy in that sense. I'm OK with the Wheaties and Gatorade and stuff like that because it's showing him advertising like it's in the context of advertising. So it makes mm-hmm. sense. Like it'd be mm-hmm. weird if you had some brand that didn't exist or something like that to avoid product placement. So you kind of you, you're kind of forced to do product placement there. But like the problem I have in this film with the Nike product placement is that it's just so contrived and obvious. Like especially when it shows them doing their footwork and you see both of them with like the Nike shoes, and I'm just like, fair enough. You could argue too that yes, they're advertising, but were they also just wearing? Workout stuff that was just common back then. It's hard to say. Like they, all I'm Nike wear, though. Everyone's yeah. wearing Nike. I shit. wore Nike all the time too. Like that was the thing too. So maybe. Yeah. No, it, it is like legit because it's Adidas in the next movie. So. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah. so I was into the Rocky movies a lot as a kid, but also as a teenager. And when I was a teenager, and Katie, I'm sure you can remember this. 
late like 1997, everyone was wearing sports shit. Mm-hmm. Especially track suits. Do you remember that? People wearing like Adidas and Nike track suits all the time. I remember like the shoes pants. more so, like very specific, like Pumas and Adidas. Yeah, and, Puma. Yeah. yeah. So I remember watching this film and be like, wow, people even wore Nike stuff all the time back then. But really, they didn't. Like the-, <laughs> mm-hmm. the Muppet Show were showing his appearance on The Muppet Show. And I know this movie came out in 1982, but The Muppet Show's final year was 1981. It ended that Correct. year. Yeah. Correct. What they did here was, as you know, Stallone really appeared on the Muppet show during its run. What they did is they had the the voice of Kermit the Frog, Frank Oz, I believe it's who does the voice, redo the voice work to say Rocky Balboa instead of Sylvester Stallone. That's all it was. So the That's images cool, the images you see here of Sly with the Muppets is his real appearance on that's the actual appearance of the Muppet show. So he appeared as himself on the Muppet show. They then just refurbished it for the uh, Rocky film that that's Rocky on the, on the, that was an actual skit the, from the, from the show. And he was Budweiser beer. He was the man or the face of every major. Yeah. Product. It's almost too much. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, is it that, like it's 20 different products. And they even created a like granola bar or power bar for him called the Rocky crunch. How did he not cheat on Adrian at this time? I know. Like, women would be throwing themselves at him nonstop. Like, I'm thinking of that because he's signing all these autographs here. Well, that's why we love him so much, because he could have. Oh, Oh, and there he's with Bob Hope. I don't know who the other guy is. That's Gerald Ford. Is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Rock, so Rocky is now Forrest Gump. Is that where yeah. like he's to, Oh, my God. He's I like, can't believe I didn't know that was true. Rocky Ford. went to the White House again. The president of the United States again. <laughs> oh, and that's Jimmy Carter, isn't it? Yes. That's right. Okay. That's right. But look how young Sly looks there. What the? Look at his face. Yeah, there. That, that looks like a Paradise Alley Sly. Yeah. Meeting. Look at the hair. That, that's not even his hair now. That's like 19... 19- 76 60. yeah sly or 72 sly that's really yeah. that i've never caught that that's so funny you gotta but, get a haircut before you meet the president yeah okay sharp. so wait that he's met jimmy carter gerald ford and ronald, ronald reagan. reagan three presidents yeah. so he is a big big deal is what yeah, this montage just, is supposed to show us. The heavyweight championship was a much bigger deal mm-hmm. back in the day, too. Right? You could find, easily find pictures of other heavyweight champions back then with the president. So, you know, that's legit. And how happy he is. Everything is just carefree. For wear Rocky a right fucking now. helmet, you guys. I see well, I people still now that don't wear helmets. We well, must not was, have a This was 82. I don't think they had helmet laws in 82, honestly. He, so they did. he has he wore a helmet though. later, though, because he yeah. threw the helmet at the statue. But well, we need the hair blowing. Scene, you, you, you can't show him with the helmet here because it would look weird, right? He does yeah. have a helmet. Look at that hair. That's a yeah. helmet head. <laughs> I don't think Colorado has a helmet law. I see people riding like on the freeway. I'm like, God dang it. But this yeah. is a great shot, though, of them on the bike with the hair going back. Because this is really, you know, Adrian or Tulia Shire in real life on the back of, you know, holding Sly. Like, how many girls would love to be in the scene mm-hmm. right now with Sly? 36 year old Sly. You got your arms wrapped around him and you're riding a motorcycle with Sly. That's legit. There's no, he's riding that motorcycle with her on the back and they both look fantastic. This is just peak Adrian and, and, uh, and Rocky. They just look fantastic. They're so happy. They're in love, money, fame, bikes, toys, and they just look great. They just they look do. great. I love this, this yes. little bit of them like rolling, rolling on the grass. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Making love. Cause, Cause normally stuff like this would destroy your relationship. Hmm. Not like them. when you have a big change like this, mm-hmm. the money gets in the way, the all the attention he gets from other girls, shit like this usually causes problems. Right. So here's oh. the end of the montage. Here we go. So we'll end it with this. We'll listen to, uh, so Clubber's knocked out whatever, the eighth or ninth person in a row, and now he's yelling to the crowd and whoever will listen, and Mickey, I want Balboa. He, he just knocked out the number one contender too, there so he's go. number one. So he should get a shot. He deserves a shot for sure. Okay. Balboa! The way he speaks is very specific as well. I can't yeah, even like, describe he, it. It's like the clip, like quick yell clip to his words. Mr. T grew up on like the projects in Chicago. From what he's described, it was insane there. 
Like it was really aggressive, rough place. Sure. But I've only been to the Chicago airport. Most of the employees there are aggressive. Like they remind me <laughs> of Clever Lang. Like it was a real kind of culture shock to me. Chicago is my favorite American city. I love it. I only could speak to the airport yeah. and the people <laughs> working there. Like I think he comes from like kind of a different world. Oh yeah. Well, we know like, that, we know that the character of Clubber from Sly that he did serve prison time. So the, him coming out the box was after his prison sentence. So he actually boxed in prison mm. as well as my understanding. But that's it. That's that's the idea. Is he is angry, angry at the world, angry at a situation, angry that there's a paper champion. So that kind of explains the anger. Is he's coming up the hard way. He's lived the hard life. He doesn't have a... Even though Rocky... He might not know Rocky was raised on the streets, too. You know, remember the neighborhood, Rock? They were both raised on the streets, to a degree, yeah. but right... Like, I agree that Rocky was raised on the streets. You have to make Clubber super angry and disagreeable, because otherwise you're going to sympathize with him way too much. He's working hard. Sure. He's earning his way to the top. He deserves to be champion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he Rocky's did. the one who got the lucky shot. Now, Rocky went through hell to become the champion. So in that way, he he also deserves to be champion because he fought Apollo twice and, like, endured something that no one else could endure. Clubber Lang has fought all the way from the top. He has a good record. You know, like what Mickey was saying in the first film? He's like, these guys, they got good records. They fight their guts out for peanuts. But you, you got a shot at the title. Mm-hmm. He's talking about Clubber there. He's talking about this guy with a good record. He fights, fights his guts out for peanuts. And those are the guys who don't get a shot. I, I sympathize with Clubber big time. If Rocky ducked him, I would hate Rocky for that. Right. But the, the, you got to make Clubber an asshole so you could still sympathize with the Rocky character. Good point. This is big, big episode, folks. Uh, I, I love it. There's only one way to get through this montage is to get through the way we did. I, I didn't want to break it up. So it's a little bit supersized episode. Thank you to you both for taking time out of your day to record. Thanks to those who joined our chat and uh, all the great comments. Uh, if you want to w- ever watch this live, you're listening to this, you're like what, what's Ryan talk about via our Discord channel and via our Facebook channel and via my Twitter, I always plug when we're about to go live on Sundays is usually usually every Sunday or every second Sunday for the Rocky and every second Sunday for the Rambo. Same idea is I'll plug the stream yard and you can join the chat. So if you're able and around, you can come join the chat and watch us live. So you get to kind of watch the whole episode or any part of it before it actually goes out in the air. And then you can join the chat. So that's who we're speaking to, if that makes sense. So join those links you get those announcements. That's how it works uh, via discord, Twitter or Facebook group. Okay. Skip so, church. Don't go skip to church. church. Yeah. I'm well, watching our podcast live instead. Okay. That's true. Join the Patreon. Help uh, support the show via that way. Send us an email. This episode is over. I didn't hear no bell. I just want to